Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Doggy Bag from Blam! This is for two to six players, take about 20 minutes to play, and it's for ages eight plus. And Doggy Bag is a push your luck style game where you're going to be trying to get all these multicolored bones, except for the black bones, because the black bones will potentially eliminate you from the game. You're going to be bidding on how many bones you can take from a bag, and you're also evil henchman or something of a bad guy who's the dog and you're stealing his bones or something like that. Not quite so sure about what the theme is out, but is it a good push your luck game? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of Doggy Bag. So first of all, you're gonna get a handy dandy rule booklet, two pages, double-sided, full color, full pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done, should have you up and running in no time at all. It's also a pretty simple game, so I can teach you how to play right now. So Doggy Bag is a push your luck game where we're all henchmen working for this big evil dog right here, and you're gonna be stealing bones out of his his bag uh, and you you get points for those bones but if you get the black bones for some reason those are super loud bones or they're booby trapped or something and he wakes up and you you were in trouble and if you get three black bones you lose the game so there is some player elimination in this game it doesn't happen that often and when it does happen it generally happens at the end of the game uh, but I'll talk more about that a little bit later so, let's go over the components, let's get into the gameplay. So, component-wise, you're going to have a whole bunch of these bones. You won't be using all the bones unless you're playing at the highest player count, because you're going to start with this many bones behind your little player shield right here. The bones are worth one point for gray bones, one point for white bones, two points for red bones, and three points for yellow bones at the end of the game. Not the bones that are behind your screen, but actually the bones that are in front of your screen, which you'll get by the push-your-luck aspect of the game, which I'll explain to you in a minute. So everyone's going to get these bones in front of them so we can set the rest of these bones off to the side. Next you're going to set up this little dog right here in the middle. This is where bones will go if you get caught with a black bone and that will make a little bit more sense later so I'll explain it a little bit later. Just know that needs to go in the center. Next you're going to have these three tokens right here. The first one is the first player token which you'll give to someone randomly at the beginning of the game. They will keep this as long as no one takes the number two tile right here so if you're first player you will be first player until someone physically takes the first player token from you when it's your turn you're going to flip these two coins right here and this will tell you how many bones you're supposed to put in the bag which i'll show you a little bit later last but not least we have somewhat uh the star of the shows which are these seven tiles right here so during each round someone's going to take each person is going to take one of these tiles and when they take a tile they will immediately take that action and then they might potentially take bones at the end of the round but i'll show you that later so first the zero action is going to let you return a black bone from in front of your screen i mentioned there's player elimination but it doesn't happen too often it doesn't happen too often because you can always just take this option right here and get Get rid of one of your black bones which means you're one step closer to not losing the game next you can do the one option and if you look at the pictures they don't make much sense now but once i explain them they will so first you can reach into the bag and you can draw a bone if it's a white yellow red or gray bone you get to put it in front of your screen and you get that many points good for you you just get points also you get to look into the bag which can be very useful uh maybe not for this round because you have such a low number but for next round because the bones stay in the bag from round to round to round, the ones that are not picked. So you get to look into the bag. Uh, next, you have the number two, which will allow you to put the dog token in front of who anyone you want. It doesn't matter. Most of the time, it's probably going to be you, but you can put it in front of anyone you want, and they'll be the first player next turn. Uh, we have three, which will allow you to take a bone out of the bag and put it in front of you as long as it's not a black bone. Now, if you do draw a black bone, it goes back into the bag, and it doesn't count towards the three strikes. That's the one time that it doesn't count. Next, number four, you look in the bag. Pretty self-explanatory. Number five, a little bit different. You're going to draw three bones out of the bag, and then you get to put one bone onto the uh, the, part, the bad guy in the middle. Now, this is very useful because if you draw a black bone, uh, you're going to put the black bone into the bag most likely, and then since you have a five, you're probably going to be the one who's pushing your luck first, so there will be one less black bone for you to pick from. Uh, moving on to number six, what you're going to do, the player takes two bones from 
the tile and places them back in the bag. So you're actually going to take two off of here and put them back into the bag. So you might take a yellow, uh, which is three points, so they're very, very seldom and scarce. Uh, you might take two blacks, for instance, if somebody has a seven. Uh, I don't know. It's really up to you. There's different strategies. There's a couple different strategies. Last but not least, you have the expert. The player exchanges a bone from behind their screen with a bone from the tile. So this is just, hey, there's a black right here, and I would like another black. So you know what? I'm just going to put my white bone out here and then put that black one right here. Seven doesn't get picked too often because this is how many you are saying uh, how many bones you're saying you can pick from the bag without drawing a black bone. So for instance, let's just say someone took a three, someone took a two, someone took a four, and someone took a six. That means that once everyone has taken their actions, whoever has the six now has to reach into the bag and draw six bones. But let's just walk you through a mock round and I'll show you exactly how it all works. So I'm the first player. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these two coins up into the air and it came down with a two. So what that means is secretly everyone is going to take two bones from behind their screen and they are going to put them into the bag. Now at the beginning of the game, the bag is going to start with one bone of each color in there. But right now I can put any two bones I want. So you know what, I'll just put uh, these two gray bones. So hey, I'll put these two gray bones in there. Boom, maybe this next guy puts a yellow and a red. Maybe the next person's evil, they put two blacks in there. And then we'll put, uh, I don't know, a white and a black. So let's say that's a four player game. So boom, we do that. Once everyone is putting their bones in the bag, what you're going to do now is starting with the first player and going clockwise, you are going to pick one of the tiles and immediately take the action. So let's just say I take, uh, I'm going to take this five right here. I kind of want to go first. I'm feeling good about the bag. So I take my action. I reach into the bag and I draw out three and I'm going to put the black one on here so that's one less black one for me to draw I'm feeling pretty good next person maybe they choose the four they look in the bag uh, this person chooses uh, the three they just grab something out of the bag and let's see what they get so they got a yellow which is great they just scored three points so they would actually uh, put the yellow token in front of there and they have three points so good for them and the next person chooses a, a two and they want to be first player next round or something so now we take a look at all the tiles and i have a five so i'm going to go first so let's see if i'm successful so i reach into the bag one at a time oh man that's terrible so first one is black so the black bone goes right there and then the five goes back here and now the person who is the next highest number has to go so this person has to draw four bones out of the bag they're probably feeling pretty good let's see what happens to them they get a yellow that's a good start they get a bow oh, no so they get the black too which means boom both of those bones go right there now the only bones, or excuse me, my mistake there, the black bones do not go there. They go in front of your screen. My bad. So they go in front of your screen because they count as one of your strikes uh, for losing the game. So the four person is screwed up. Now we go back to that three person here. Probably didn't think they were going to draw, so they draw. They got a gray bone. They draw again. They got a gray bone, so it's looking really good. They're excited, they're nervous, and boom, they got a red bone, which means they put all three of these bones in front of them, and now the round is over. The person who has the two does not get to push their luck, does not get the potential to get any points. Now, I want to go back to these two people right here who busted, who got the black bone. How this works is you put all the black bones you drew and all the gray bones you drew in front of you. So if you drew, say for instance, uh, two gray bones and then you drew a black bone, then you actually get to keep those two gray bones, which is two points. But all the other bones, the yellow and the red bones, go to the center and the white bones go to the center and you lose those points. So now this person would go first and you would rinse, wash, and repeat the process, seeing how many bones you're going to put in there and then uh, drawing the tiles and doing the push your luck aspect. Now there's two other things I want to mention. When does the game end, you may be asking yourself. Well, there's a couple different ways that the game can end. Uh, first, if everyone is eliminated, then obviously only the person who's not eliminated is going to win. However, at the end of the stealing phase, uh, the remaining players do not have any more bones behind their screen, then the game will end. And also, if there's no more black bones in the bag, the game will end. I've not seen the game end that way, but it is a way for the game to end. 
there also is a, a beginner version of the game where you get rid of all the special abilities and you just bid on the numbers. And there's one other thing which I've never actually seen happen, but I suppose it could happen, called the hot head, which is where instead of taking one of these seven numbers, you take one of these numbers and then you flip it up and then you say a number. So you say, I can do eight or something like that. And then they pretty much just immediately do that and they would lose most likely. But still, it is something that you can potentially do. So you do it without gaining a special ability. But anywho, that in a nutshell is how you're going to play the Push Your Luck game, Doggy Bag. All right then, Doggy Bag from Blam. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. The, the first big one that I have is that I think this is going to be a little bit too light for most people looking for a push-your-luck game night filler game. While it is an acceptable game, it's not a bad game for a game night, I still feel like it just missed the boat a little bit too much by being a little bit too light. And the biggest problem that I have with it is I really wish there was more diversity in the special ability tiles. Because the special ability tiles are cool. And I like the fact that when you take it, you immediately do it. And that makes things interesting. But I still wish they had more of a variety of these tiles. Uh, I feel like it was a missed opportunity to not make these double-sided. So you could have different special abilities during different games. Now technically they are double-sided because you can use the hothead special ability which lets you uh pick eight nine or ten but i didn't see anybody use that special ability with the games that i played because drawing eight nine or ten is really stinking difficult if you draw eight nine or ten it should really give you a special ability at the least because it's really hard to do that um, so I feel like as a game night game, this is one that most people are going to want to pass on because it's just a little bit too light. Another comment that I have with this game is that the theme makes no sense at all. I'm pretty sure we're like drug dealers are bad guys for a bad dog and the, the bones we're stealing are either money or drugs. And if they catch you stealing it three times and they kill you, I think that's the theme of the game. The theme's just odd. Uh, it doesn't really make much sense, but Hey, it's a push your luck game. So it doesn't need to make that much sense. Not personally for me, but hey, that's that's for that's a your mileage may vary kind of thing. Any other cons I have with the game? Oh yeah, I liked it best at four, five, and six players. Two and three is okay. You know what? I'll say three is okay. I didn't like the game at two players that much, but I liked it best at four, five, and six. Just with two and three players, there's just not enough bones or the numbers aren't as high and it's just not as interesting as it is when you get to that four five and six players and you really start pushing your luck and you really start thinking well do i actually want to do a hothead somebody took the seven now we still didn't have anybody who did the hothead but still people considered it when we played at six players so i imagine some people might actually do it the higher player counts so i like to best at the higher player counts Oh, the bag. The bag's already starting to fray and, like, fall apart, and it's not a custom bag or anything. I mean, really, you only use the bag to put bones in and draw bones out of, but still, that is annoying, and some people will be annoyed by that. That's what I got on the con side. Moving on to the pros, I enjoyed Donkey Bag. I thought it was a good family weight press your luck game. And if you're looking for a family weight press your luck game that is easy to learn, that is easy to teach, that does not have, doesn't feel fiddly or anything like that, then I think this is a good game for you. I really do. I think if you have kids between the ages of eight to 16, somewhere in that range, I think they're really going to enjoy this game. Do I think it's the best push your luck game that I've played? No. I can think of four, five, six off the top of my head. But if you like Press Your Luck games and you have a good collection of them and you're a family weight gamer, I think this is a decent game to add to your collection. So what did I like about the game? I like the components. I like the artwork. Uh, I like the fact that it does Press Your Luck very well. There's tense moments, especially when you got the four, five, six, seven, and you're reaching to that bag and you're like, oh man, can I get the last one? Can I get the last one? Can I get the last one? And then it's a black phone and you're like, oh no! And then the person who maybe draw the four is like oh i get to draw i get to grow up but then they remember what they saw in the bag because they had that and like oh no there's a lot of black phones in here but they don't want to say that because it's secret information um i like the special abilities in the game i like the fact that you can look into the bag and there's a little bit of forward planning there because you're like oh man there's not many black bones in this bag so maybe next time i'll put a lot of you know yellow or red or white bones in there and then i'll bid big because i know there's not that many black bones I like that aspect of the game, and I like how easy the game is to learn. It doesn't outstay its welcome. It doesn't feel fiddly. Mechanically, it's a very straightforward game. And in the end, Doggy Bag, I can recommend it as a good family weight, press-your-luck style game that it's easy to teach to just about anybody. But 
As a game night game, I felt like it was a little bit too light. My game night didn't hate the game, but they were like, oh, it's okay. Uh, it's the kind of thing where they would much rather play a different pressure luck game, say like the Adventures or Temple Run or something like that, that just has a little bit more meat on the bone. So that is Doggy Bag from Blam. I think it's a good family weight pressure luck game, but as a game night game, just didn't hit the mark for me. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. Leave the comments below. Let me know what is your favorite pressure luck game oh man i'm sure i'm gonna forget a pressure luck game but the one that i played just recently that i really really liked was the adventurers we have to run into this temple and you have to go in there and you have to you know try not to get by alligators and bit by scorpions and you're trying to get the points out but the temple is slowly collapsing in on you so it becomes a little bit of a maze really enjoyed that game it's got different asymmetrical special abilities uh which is something that i also wish that this game had i feel like that would have been something really cool to add to this game even if you just put it on like the cards and it's just like oh you have this special ability if you want to use that i feel like it just could have given it some longer legs but anywho let me know in the comments below what is your favorite pressure luck game and as always thanks for your time youtube